Hi guys, welcome to the Ants Canada Ant channel. This is Mikey Bustos, aka Ants Canada, and as you can see here, this is a video about another new colony, my Trichomyrmix Destructor colony. Now, for those of you that follow us on Instagram or Facebook, I asked you guys what formicarium you would like me to move these ants into, and you guys casted your votes? And turns out most of you wanted me to move the colony into an Omninest vertical from our store. So your wish is my command. This video will go over the process of how to move an ant colony into one of our Omninest vertical formicariums, or any formicarium for that matter, what to expect when an ant colony first moves into your formicarium, and a little about the life of a fledging colony. You'll also find out why these ants are commonly called destructive trailing ants, and why they are expected to be among the most difficult to keep ants ever. It's a jam-packed video guys, so stay tuned and watch till the end. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so to start, what I did was I needed to apply my deterrent. Here I use Insecta Slip, bought from a website called bioquip.com, and I mix that solution with water in two parts water, one part Insecta Slip, and I simply paint the solution onto the walls of the outworld. And once it dries, the ants have trouble climbing up the walls, which will be a great help at keeping the ants inside their outworld. I highly recommend it as a deterrent. All right, so now that my deterrent is all set and ready, it's time for me to move the ants in. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to place this test tube into the outworld, and then I'm just going to unplug the test tube. Hey guys, your first taste of freedom. Now I've already placed um, all of the uh, deterrent, in this case it's Fluon, on the walls, so they can't escape. And I'm going to put the test tube close to the opening so they'll find their home easier. Come on, there we go. Now, this process of moving a colony into the formicarium does take a while, it takes some time. Um, you know, it's uh, Best to let them do it themselves, but it can take a while. Um, sometimes colonies take a week, two weeks, um, sometimes even a month. But you have to be patient, you know, in ant keeping. Now this colony was raised in the dark, so now that they're all exposed, they're all kind of panicking. Um, ants can learn to get used to the light. And in this case, in the Omni Nest, where everything is kind of exposed, they can get used to that. But I still want them to learn to enjoy living in the dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the Omni Nest just to make it that much more desirable. Um, and as you can see, the cotton here is not moldy. You see, it's not moldy. And the water is still pretty fresh. So they have no reason to move out. But uh, I intend to make this Omni Nest vertical much more attractive to them as a nest to live in. So to make the formicarium more desirable for the ants to move into, I had to proceed to hydrate the nest by adding water to my hydration chambers and also make the formicarium nice and dark because ants just naturally love the dark. All right, and now the most I can do here is add this book over here to make it dark. As for the other side, a little piece of paper like that should do. All right, another thing you can do to encourage them to move is you can shine a light on the test tube. Now, the one I'm using right now doesn't give off a lot of heat. It's an energy saver lamp, so it's mostly just the light, I mean, and a little bit of heat. Um, but this encourages them to move out of the test tube. Now, if you're using an incandescent bulb, do not leave it as close as this um, because it does emit a lot of heat and yeah, your colony can die. 
Um, just today, someone emailed me saying he used um, a light bulb and used heat to move his colony out, and they never ended up moving out. They just stayed in the tube, and then they ended up cooking. So you don't want that. Um, but uh, yeah, this is one of the advantages of raising your colony in the dark. You get them to um, learn to love living in the dark, and it really is useful. All right, so here's where the fun begins. The bright lights and heat will cause your ant colony to grow uncomfortable and exposed, so they will immediately begin their colony relocation response. Communicating exclusively by pheromones, the ants will immediately dispatch and seek out areas within the vicinity that aren't bright or hot. All it takes is one ant to have the idea to move the colony into the place you made attractive to them, and soon enough, another ant will agree and begin transporting the colony, then another will join then another, and then another, until the entire workforce is joining in at moving the young and convincing the queen to also check out the new space that everyone is raving about. In this way, ants use democracy. And just like you guys did on our Instagram and Facebook for this video, they work on a sort of majority voting system. It's ant democracy at its finest. Oh yeah, and they make their decisions really fast. So fast forward then to the next day. When the ants have settled in to their new home, I find they sort of just go through an inactive period where they regain their energy after the major operation. After a move, I always like to provide fresh food and water for them to recoup and replenish. You can see here that all night they've been working on a freshly killed cricket eating its contents and bringing pieces of it back to the nest. They've even brought in a whole leg for further working. Even this early, the ant colony has an established garbage room, as seen here towards the right, and even the family bathroom. And yes, ants have a bathroom area. All of those whitish cloudy streaks, yeah, that's ant poop. Surprised? Well, they're not really allowed to just defecate anywhere. That could lead to bacteria outbreaks and spread of dangerous microbes, which could mean death for the colony, so the ants must stay as clean as possible. This garbage room and bathroom area will change to another location as the colony grows and they require more space. The ants are very systematic. Okay, so a little bit more about this species of ant. The scientific name of these ants is Trichomyrmex destructor, formerly known as Monomorium destructor. This ant is a very invasive species throughout the world, and it exists in most tropical countries, including here in the Philippines, where the queen of this colony was collected. This species has become so successful throughout the world because of its tendency to be aggressive to other ant species, friendly to workers of other colonies of the same species, their ability to recruit worker ants of other colonies, and their ability to grow into massive, massive colonies. Apparently they sting, but I haven't felt it yet. Though this colony is small and manageable now, I have a feeling this will be a very difficult ant species to keep and is by no means a beginner species. But hey, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that hasn't stopped me in the past. According to Wikipedia, in some regions, this is a major pest species. Foraging workers chew through non-nutritive materials such as fabric, rubber, and plastic. They have been observed chewing up tires and polystyrene cups. They can damage cables and electrical insulation, causing malfunctions in electrical equipment and telecommunication systems. The ant has been known to short out the ignition systems in cars and has been responsible for car and house fires. Hmm, something tells me I'm gonna wanna relocate this colony outside somewhere when they get to an ample size. But I guess for the purposes of learning, I'll film this colony for as long as I can. Or until they chew through the plastic. I've never heard of any ant that could do that. Anyway, when I'm not observing this colony, I'll place it in my closet just so they're kept in the dark. Throughout the ant stay in this formicarium, they'll continue to change rooms, relocate the colony in different parts of the formicarium as they hydroregulate, or in other words, move throughout the nest in accordance to how much moisture they need. It's a great opportunity for you as the ant keeper to learn exactly what conditions your ants like. 
Be sure to keep the ants well fed, well watered, and well loved. Thanks again guys for watching this video. This is Ants Canada signing out. Bye! Hey guys, as always, thanks so much for watching my videos. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also like, share and comment, please. Really would appreciate that. Also check out some of my helpful playlists. I've got an ant tutorial playlist, a playlist dedicated to Solenopsis geminata, Tetramorium and Campanotis noviborcensis. It's ant love forever! Yeah! <laughs>